Welcome. Welcome to the city of David. Welcome to Bethlehem. Come into our city. Spend your money. Look at our shops, our wares, our craftsmen and craftswomen. Come in to the city of David. Come to Bethlehem. On the right, you pay your taxes. As you enter the gate, you must pay your taxes. All that enter the gate must pay taxes. Give to Caesar what is Caesar's. On your left is your money changer. Only 30% interest. Change your money. You'll change your shekel into dinar. Change your money. Pay your taxes and move along. On the right is a taxidermy. Tell us what you do. We have leather, fur, whatever you want to keep you lasting throughout the whole year. And back here to the left, we have Our Lady of Purple. She supplies cloth for families of royalty. Purple cloth is made from a snail. It takes a thousand snails to make one purple cloth. It's the finest fun in all Come, come this way. Buy your frankincense and myrrh. On your right is our silversmith. She will make jewelry and all. Watch out behind you, there's a beggar. Out of the way, beggar. Our Lady of Unleavened Bread. Come, come this way. The beggar. Soldiers, to your right here is our carpenter of carvings, bowls. Come, come this way. To your left is our lady of fruits, dates. Fresh melons and pomegranates, dates and figs. Finest in all of Bethlehem. Only the best for Bethlehem. Come this way. Baskets. To the right is our basket weaver. Get your baskets here. Handmade baskets, all sizes. Carry your Only the best for Bethlehem. To your left is Our Lady of Olives. Get your fresh olives here. All types of olive oil, olive wood, and olives. Come, come this way. Spend your money here in Bethlehem. Our ladies of sacrificial doves. They only want. 40. Bethlehem. How much? 40 denarii. Good night. To the left is our Lady of Perfume. Hi, I have exotic oils and scents and perfumes. I have all Come, come this way. much for coming by my perfumery. And to the right is our fisherman. Tell us what you've got in your market. I have crabs and lobsters and I have some whiting here today. I make nets and weed baskets and anything a fisherman wants, I have. Lobster and crawfish and all. Come this way. To your left is our lady of candles. What kind of candles do we have? Thank you. And to the right, we have some llamas. And then back here to your left, we have our potters. Here we have pots, big pots, little pots, pots for your grain, pots for your wine. And we're making some new pots. If you don't see anything here you like, come on into our pottery shop and we have some more. Wow. Thank and you for coming to Bethlehem. And to your right, we have our blacksmith. We have a young entrepreneur there making a sword. He spent several years making that sword. When will you have it ready, Jaden? A long time. Be a long time, huh? He's working on it. Come this way. Okay. Come. Shepherds, what are you doing here? You're supposed to be in the fields tending to your flocks. We have come to see a Christ child born in bed. Perhaps he's in the manger. There's no room in the Bethlehem Market Inn and Suites. Follow them toward the manger.
Let me shine It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. The thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices on yonder break. A new and glorious morn, fall on your knees. Oh, hear the angels' voices. Oh, night divine. Christ was born, oh, night divine, oh, night, oh, night divine. What a blessing it is to have you here tonight. You know, isn't it interesting that after 2,000 years, not much has changed. But all the while, the miracle of the Christ being born, there's still a lot of hustle and bustle going on in the streets. Folks trying to make those last-minute purchases and those people trying to make the last-minute sales so that they can meet their quota. You know, the interesting thing is that it's no different today. And yet, God still, in His grace and mercy, loved us enough to sin his only begotten son. Why? Well, because we were desperate and needed a savior. You see, God has left before us a standard. It's called the Ten Commandments. All of us have lied. Every one of us have told a lie. Some of us, most of us have taken, stolen something irrespectful of its value. We may use God's name in vain and use God's name as a cuss word when the God of creation gave us life. And yet, he loved us anyway. He gives us... Would be guilty or innocent? Well, let me clarify that for you. The Bible says, if you break one commandment, you'll be guilty. God in his mercy, but God is also righteous. In his righteousness, he says that those who have broken his standard, those who have gone and broken his law, deserve the punishment. And that punishment is eternal separation from God in a place called hell. Most of us think that we're pretty good people. We think that we're okay because we compare ourselves to those around us and, and looking at other people, we may be pretty good, but according to God's righteousness, we're not. The Bible actually says, there's none righteous, no, not one. There's none good. So that leaves us in a pretty bad place. But God loved us so much that He sent His only begotten Son. That if we believe and we repent and put our faith in Him, then we can have everlasting life. Oh, I know some of us say, well, you don't know, I, I've asked God for forgiveness. Well, that's very well and good. But the problem with that is, if I can give you a scenario, if you murdered someone or if you stole something from someone and you were carried to court and you stood there before that man that is called a judge and he was about to deliver his sentence and, he, and you said, but your honor, I, I've asked for forgiveness. He would still, he would still cause you to pay the price. And, and we must understand that simply asking for forgiveness is not always good enough. Because most of the time we ask for forgiveness because we simply got caught. You see, the Bible says in order for us to come to faith in Christ, we first must repent. We need to get to a point where we realize that the sin, the, the lying, the stealing, the adultery, all of those things... God's perfect standard has been broken and we've broken the heart of God and we realize that and we need to turn away from that and put our faith in Jesus Christ. What does it mean to put your faith in Christ? What it means is that you don't think that you can do good or you can turn over a loo leaf or you can change things yourself. 
You see, you have no ability to change things yourself. You must, by faith, come to Christ. He can legally dismiss your sin, and He can legally wipe away the, the crime that you that you committed. But you have to realize, first of all, you've broken His commandment, and you need faith in Christ. This evening, if you've not ever done that, and you want to come to know Christ, maybe you've said a prayer and you've been baptized, but your life has not changed. I want to share with you this, that you cannot have a life-changing experience with the Savior of the universe and stay where you are and not be different. There must be a change. So in just a minute, I want to pray with you, and I want to invite you to come and share with us your need for salvation. If you've never done that, that's what we're here for. Father, I thank you today for your grace. I thank you for these that have come, and I thank you for the opportunity to share Bethlehem and to share our lives with these that have come. We ask your grace and blessing on everyone that's been here tonight. And we ask, Father, that if someone, anyone's come through here tonight needing you, that, Father, they've heard the message and that they would come to a place of repentance and salvation. Thank you, Father, for your mercy and grace. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you.